Quadrature lattice is the set of all points in the Cartesian plane for which both the X and Y coordinates are integers. If you like to draw graphs on graph paper, the lattice can be thought of as the set of all the intersections of the grid lines. A lattice path is one of the shortest possible paths connecting two points on the lattice, moving only horizontally and vertically. So let's first draw out a co coordinate plane and then we can look at some examples. So here's a coordinate plane. Let's take a look at where the lattice is. Now the lattice differs slightly from the coordinate plane in the sense that we're only looking at the coordinates here that have integer values. So for example, this point right here is on the lattice. This point right here is also on the lattice because both coordinates are integers. Zero, zero, and one, zero are both coordinates with, or both points with coordinates that are integers. Another one is one comma one right there. That's another uh, point on the lattice. That's another point on the lattice. And so if you notice, you can think of, again, the intersections on that graph paper that you probably have or have seen before. So these are all the points on the lattice. Again, it's really important to understand that we're not looking at the space in between these points. Those points are not on the lattice. Uh, this, act this lattice actually extends in all directions. So you can think of all these red dots as points on the lattice. So again, I, I'm focusing here on the upper right quadrant just because we're going to be doing some examples there. But this lattice extends throughout the entire coordinate plane on all four quadrants. Now, let's take a look at an example. We're going to look at lattice paths from the point 0, 0, which is right here, to the point 3, comma 2, which is right there. Now, let's take a look at some lattice paths. I'm specifically going to show you three, although there are more than three. So let's find the shortest way to get from this blue point to that blue point, only moving horizontally and vertically. You can't move diagonally. So we can go to the right three and up two. That's one way of getting there. Uh, that's one lattice path. Uh, let's use a different color for another one. Let's do maybe. Um, I'm not sure what color this one is. This might surprise me. We can go up one, over to the right, up one, over the right two. That's a very unique color. Um, we can do up two, over to the right, three. Those are three different lattice paths. But the following would not be a lattice path. If I go to the left one, and then up two, and then over four, that is not a lattice path because that has length seven. But we can get from zero, zero to three comma two um, with paths length five. So seven is way too long. So we're gonna delete that one. That is not a lattice path. So here are some lattice paths. Now notice, to ensure the path is the shortest possible, each move must be either to the right or up. Additionally, in this case, note that no matter what path we take, we must make three steps to the right and two steps up. No matter what order we make these steps, there will always be five steps. Thus, each path has length five. Now, here's the counting question in this video. How many lattice paths are there between 0, 0 and 3, comma 2? between those two blue dots. We could try to draw all of them, or instead of drawing them, maybe just list which directions we travel on each of the five steps. So one path, for example, might be R, R, U, U, R. So again, we move three times to the right and two times up. It just depends on how we order this. Or maybe we could do, U, U, R, R, R. So we go up two and to the right three. 
Or we can do are you are are you? So how many such strings of R's and U's are there? Notice that each of these strings must contain five symbols. Exactly three of them must be R's, since our destination is three units to the right. Now, this seems awfully familiar. In fact, what if we used ones instead of R's and zeros instead of U's? Then we would just have five bit strings of weight three. As we've seen in previous lectures, there are 10 of those. So there are 10 lattice paths from 0, 0 to 3, comma 2. The correspondence between bit strings and lattice paths does not stop there. Here's another way to count lattice paths. Consider the lattice shown here. Let me pull it up here. We're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see that better. That you can see that better, I should say. Okay. Any lattice path from 0, 0 to 3, comma 2 must pass through exactly one of A and B. The point A is four steps away from 0, 0, and uh, two of them are towards the right. The number of lattice paths to A is the same as the number of four bit strings of weight two, which is six. So there are six ways of going from zero, zero to A. The point B is four steps away from zero, zero, but now three of them are towards the right. So the number of paths to point B is the same as the number of four bit strings of weight three, which is four. So the number of ways to get to A is six. The number of ways to get to B is four. So the total number of paths to three comma two is just six plus four, because in order to get to three comma two, you have to either go through A or B. So we're either taking one of six paths or one of four paths. This is the same way we calculated the number of five bit strings of weight three. Here's the point. The exact same recurrence relation exists that exists for uh, bit strings also exists for lattice paths. Now you might ask why we keep reteaching the same concept with different contexts. It's because this is the heart of discrete math. Sometimes you might encounter a problem that seems incredibly challenging, but the but that's because the context behind the problem is challenging and unfamiliar. But when you reframe problems into a framing that you are familiar with, the problem becomes incredibly easy. And one can argue that learning discrete math is all about learning how to reframe a problem into something more familiar. If you can do that, then you can solve many challenging problems, just in general. Anyways. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.